Welcome to Ender University Emblems 201. The 201 being that we already had an Emblems class when Emblems first came out. So if you need to understand how Emblems work, how to get them, uh, the basics of them, that video is still really, really good. There's some, I guess, updates that need to be made, but they're pretty minor ones, like the crit rate emblems have gotten nerfed since then. Uh, cooldown reduction uh, got nerfed on the black emblems. Their new emblems were introduced. The navy set was introduced. Um, but yeah, the core concepts in that video still stand true. If you've seen that or you have a good understanding of emblems, today's class is going to be great for you. If you're still a little bit behind on emblems, hang out. You know, what I'm going to be sharing is still helpful. Um, but I have three big things that we're going to talk about, okay? So one and the most important thing are standard builds that you can have equipped and you'll never have to worry about emblems again. I'm going to give you three emblem builds. Have those locked and loaded and you can play every single Pokemon in the game. Uh, some more like niche or Pokemon specific builds. They're more fun, more situational. But some cool builds to share with you guys and i'll also be going over my thought process when i'm making a build kind of the tools that i use and also i'm going to be giving very specific emblem builds and not everyone has every emblem so i think if you stick around to the end um you'll be able to understand how you can customize your own emblems you know if you're missing a core one that you see in one of my builds you're like what am i supposed to replace it with the the last part of this uh lecture will be really good for that Cool. Before I get started as well, uh, a lot of help comes to uh, from different members of the community, different places in the community. Unite DB, um, a lot of the screenshots, a lot of the resources I get, the data, um, the emblem tools, the screenshots that I took coming from directly from Unite DB. So please support them. Uh, the math cord, which you can find in the description of this YouTube video, exclamation mark math cord in my chat. I bounce a lot of ideas off of them, especially for this video in particular. Um, and they actually also have a section where Evo, um, one of the contributors of the math code, one of the ones that does a lot of work for them, he put together, they put together several builds. So you can go check that on their Discord as well. Uh, and then Palace Blue, my girlfriend, she helped make this presentation look a lot more presentable. You know, before this, it was just an ugly, google sheets document so came to life uh with her help as well but cool we'll start off with the standard builds for every pokemon and one of the easiest ones we can talk about and the build that's existed since emblems came out is the standard special attacker kind of build uh it features six green emblems and thankfully because of the way the green emblems are set up you have four green black emblem pairs so you'll see those right here um that allows you to heavily invest in the black set which is cooldown reduction a stat that's very important for special attackers but one thing that you know i didn't emphasize enough in the first video and when i was first you know kind of figuring emblems out is there are certain emblems that you want to have for stats so the venomoth and the valpoom for example they give very great stats um so i want to have gold versions of these bejo and victory build these things give like attack or minus HP, um, stats that we're not really concerned about. So you want to maximize, um, like to min-max your stats, you want to make sure that you have bronze versions of emblems that are, exist solely for your color combinations, and then gold or silver versions of ones that exist for both color combination and stats. Like Venusaur, for example, is plus special attack, minus attack. It's the perfect kind of emblem. Venonat uh, is plus HP, minus attack, I believe. Like. Just really, really good stats coming along the lines of here, which is why you'll see on the bottom, my build's also incredibly efficient, right? The things that you're losing out in this build are physical attack and crit rate, both stats that aren't necessary for special attackers at all. Uh, flat HP is very, very nice. And then the other one, and this is a more recent um, kind of concept that I've gone really attached to, is the idea of movement speed uh, emblems. Right, 105 movement speed represents anywhere from like a 2 to 3% increase in movement speed all throughout the game, right? Whether you're in combat or out of combat. So 105 movement speed, if you can accomplish it from emblems without having to lose anything, 
is pretty helpful, especially on the new map where you have to get around the map really, really quickly. Um, if it can mean the difference between you outrunning a move or dodging a skill shot, that pays its worth in HP as well. Um, so you'll see I have two very, three very efficient speed emblems on, and they're Gengar, Zubat, and Starmie. All of these are plus speed, minus attack. Um, so it just works out really nice. The Starmie pair as well to give the two um, additional bonus here as well. And because of that, right, because this build is so clean, so efficient, and it has all the stats that a special attack Pokemon would want, you could play this build on any special attack Pokemon in the game. I've got most of them listed here. A handful of them are missing. But even those Pokemon, which you'll see on the next slide, you could run this build on. Um, if your Pokemon's powered by special attack, this build's fine. Now, you might see minus 0.6% crit rate for the Glaceon. Um, that's coming from a couple of the emblems here. You can make a dedicated Glaceon build, but to be honest, I don't think you're going to miss out that much from Glaceon losing 0.6% crit rate. I think you're going to be absolutely fine playing this build on Glaceon as well. Um, I, I, I wouldn't have a pr problem with it at all. Um, and then, yeah, all the other Pokemon, it synergizes really, really well on. Special attackers are mostly move reliant. So getting extra cooldown reduction is very, very good. You can pair, as you can see on the left side, with Amp or Shell Bell. Um, I'd say choice specs are your premier damage item when it comes to special attackers. And then picking an additional offensive item and one defensive item is kind of how you want to build these Pokemon. Each Pokemon can be built differently. Some of these can use muscle, some of them can't. Um, and next, in your university, whether it's next week or the following week, we're going to be talking about item builds for every single Pokemon. So I'll build that out for those of you that want that built out as well. But for now, you know, if you're running any two or any two of the top items and any one of these bottom items, your build's going to be absolutely fine. Like it, you, you can only go so wrong, especially if you have choice specs in. Um, but cool. So this is build number one. N name it special attackers, SPA, whatever you want. Um, I would say this is like build 1B. Uh, if you play a lot of special attack tank Pokemon, primarily like these four, maybe you can slide in Blissey. Um, or maybe you've been, you know, more uh, enjoying a tankier type of play style for your special attack Pokemon. I would say this is also a fine build that you can run. And you can run this on most of these Pokemon as well. Um, you know, I could imagine this type of build maybe favoring something like maybe Sylveon a little bit better. Um, if I'm looking back, Eldegoss, some Pokemon that don't have built-in cooldown reduction and don't rely on it as much, or these Pokemon you see here. Now, the main difference between the two builds is the previous build took advantage of the fact that there are so many black and green combinations, four of them to be exact. Um, this build takes advantage of the fact that we have two black and white combinations and allows us to fill the remaining four slots after six green into white emblems. And with the introduction of Scyther, this became possible before we, without Scyther, this was impossible to do. And we also got two or three actually really, really powerful special attack white emblems. Zapdos is plus HP minus attack. Articuno is plus special attack minus attack. And same as Porygon, I believe they're plus special attack minus attack. So these three emblems like really enable your special attack Pokemon now to have a white emblem set. Chansey is plus HP minus defense. It's one of the only ones I think is going to contribute something negative to us here. But this one is very replaceable. Like you could play a lot of different things in the spot. Uh, in fact, I think Pidgey is the exact same stats as this. Um, Pidgeotto is also viable. You have a lot of options. And then, you know, the same green emblems we talked about earlier are going to be playing. I like to play these two, the Venom Moth and the Vile Plume in all my green builds because they're green and black and they both contribute really good stats. Uh, I added in the second green black victory bell, which isn't a good stat holder, but gives us an additional 1% cooldown reduction, which is also very valuable. And then also because of all of these really great emblems we have, we get 250 flat HP, we get six special attack. Yes, we lose about you know three defense on each end, um, but the general rule of thumb is, you know, six defense equals about 1% HP to that stat type. Um, so this is like a 0.5% HP loss, uh, you could say, which is more than made up from the six, uh, six white and the flat 250 here. Uh, again, similar types of items will work well. 
because these Pokemon are generally a lot tankier, it's because they're either supporters or defenders that might not require as much farm. EXP share can be a fine option, you know, good baseline stats, great effect on it. Any of these tank items, I would say, are viable. Assault Vest in the current meta. In the future, if we move away from special attack Pokemon, it might not be as viable. Um, and these are your damage or hybrid damage types of items you can rely on. Muscle Band, also an option if your Pokemon has decent basic attacks or is a ranged Pokemon. Um, Wise Glasses, generally, you want to stick away from on special tanks. And this is just something that happens to be true, is that the tankier your special attack Pokemon are generally, uh, this isn't like a catch-all kind of thing, but generally the lower their baseline special attack is, making Wise Glasses significantly worse for them. Um, and generally these Pokemon also tend to have better ratios than their base stats, so stacking specs is um, always seen as an option here. So cool. So we talked about two special attack builds. Um, if you don't play a lot of the special attack tanks, I would only focus on this one. If you do, you could have both or only one of these. You're, you can't go wrong with either of them, but have both of those loaded. Now let's talk to our physical attackers, our all-rounders, our, you know, people that rely on physical damage. Um, we have a build dedicated for you guys as well. Very, very simple kind of build, same kind of mindset, where we want to run the double color combinations on things that are really really good so we've got the neato pair which is um since emblems have come out have been a very good strong pair of emblems brown and purple immediately two of each uh with the introduction of gyarados being another blue emblem and then we have polyrath you could also swap polyrath here for kabutops which is a crit rate emblem i prefer the more bulk that you get i don't really care for the 0.6 percent crit rate but if you really like crit or you're more likely to play pokemon that rely on crits you could swap that out there um, you know, with all the combination of all that, the, all of these white emblems being great on stats, all the brown emblems being really good on stats. Um, the only negative you you get from this entire set is the Nato King, but the Nato King enables you to get uh, percent special defense, so it makes up for it there. Um, and it's just a very efficient build. Minus twenty seven special attack for a Pokemon that literally has no use for it, absolutely no use for it. It's very very nice. So. Um, you can load this build up. Uh, if you're missing some of these white emblems, the Pidgey or Pidgeotto can be a replacement. You'll lose a little bit extra defense, but that's fine. Um, Kangaskhan is also, a, a you know, if you have that, I would put that in first because Kangaskhan is pretty much replaceable with Pidgeot here. Um, Raticate is an option. And when we get to the end of this, I'll show you guys how to find really good emblems. I just happen to have a lot of them memorized. So yeah, this is more of like a physical attacker, more damage oriented build. So you'll see a lot of the physical attackers here where you're just missing some tanks basically. Um, but even for Pokemon like Trevenant, for Mamoswine, Crustal, these tankier Pokemon, this extra 12 attack comes in very, very handy. All your moves scale off of this, but even in the early game laning for last hitting, it's very, very nice. Um, the extra 4% can go a long way. And a lot of these Pokemon, you have to re remember that tank or attack stat equals tank stat in at least some form of the way the character works um tyranitar's ancient power shields rely on percent attack or just your attack stat serena's healing and shielding is attack based lucario's passive uh, and healing from e-speed is attack based um azumarill greninja any pokemon that life steals so you know your defense can be a really good offense for some of these pokemon too but say um you know, you play all the physical attack Pokemon, and I promise you as four builds, right? So we had special attacker, special tank, physical attacker. Let's move on to physical tank. This is kind of like an um, a reverse of the other build where the, this build is six four, six brown, four white. Um, we've got six white, four brown this time. Uh, I This is a type of build that I really would like on Greedent. Uh, Snorlax also, you know, really, really benefits from it. These are Pokemon that are potentially less reliant on their attack stat to scale um but still you know if you loaded into snorlax reasons with this build you'd be fine if you loaded in with trevenant or mamo or one of these pokemon with this build you'd also be absolutely fine um all we're basically doing um and there's another hidden tech about this build that you guys are going to realize too and this is my own flair that i added to it um 
is we took out two of the brown emblems, right? So we took out uh, the Pauly Wrath and I think the Marowak, uh, and we added in two white emblems. Two of those white emblems I was talking about earlier, um, or one of them being Kangaskhan. And the special flair that I add is a new emblem is Aerodactyl. Um, this emblem is minus five defense for plus movement speed, but it also happens to be a brown white emblem, right? Which frees up a spot in your six four build because typically you can run six white, four brown, and it takes up 10 spots, but that fits, um, that opens up the room, right? For the new tech that we were talking about earlier, Starmie. Now Starmie does lower your attack by two, which is annoying, um, but it gives you plus 35 movement speed, and it's a dual color slot that fits perfectly with our one Nido because we're not running the Nido pair, because that opens up the room here, and with the Gyarados. So now we get to have, you know, um, two of each of these defense ones, which kind of makes up for the fact that Aerodactyl took some of our move speed away. Um, and then we also get to run a move speed emblem through Doug Trio, giving us three move speed emblems and 105 movement speed, which, are, which is a stat that's very, very valuable for tanks. Um, one item that I don't have listed here, we have Shell Bell, it should be a Float Stone here. Um, but Float Stone is such a good item right now, it boosts your attack, it gives you out of combat movement speed and in combat movement speed. I, I love this build. This is a build that, you know, once I can build it on my main because or my smurf account, because uh, I don't have missing a star me, I'm so excited to play this. Uh, solid movement speed, 200 base HP, still very efficient. Look at how much minus special attack we have here. It's absolutely amazing. So yeah, that should cover you guys. Like I would say if you can invest your 2,800 coins and buying another page, which you can do, as of the latest big patch. Um, I would have these four builds loaded up, but if you can only have three spots open, um, I would pick a special, the special attacker build, physical attacker build, and then one of the tank builds. All of them are fine. I think if you can fit in four, ideally that would be good. But, you know, these are very generic builds, right? This is, th if you noticed throughout the presentation, I covered all, every single Pokemon in the game. Uh, all 41 can fit between these four builds. But say you want something more specific, right? You're like, you know, I'm a this Pokemon main or Ender. We don't see you use like red emblems at all. What's going on with red emblems? Well, I've made some red emblem builds. I think there's some um, exploration that can be done. And if you guys want to try out these builds, I might try them out when I can make them as well. Um, go for it. But I would say one of the reasons we don't see a lot of red emblem builds is one, there's no, there aren't many or any really good color combinations with red. They just didn't give us many. And the stats on almost all of them are really, really bad. In fact, there's more special attack red emblems than physical attack ones. And physical attackers are the ones you'd expect to use attack speed. And then on top of that, there's obviously all the nuance with attack speed, um, you know, the frames in between your attacks and there being thresholds, which we covered in the last emblem video. So if you don't understand that, I would uh, refer to that video, but cool. Let's take a look at some Red Emblem builds. This is a build that's dedicated, I would say, for Duraludon. Uh, the reason why it works on Duraludon is with three Red Emblems, I believe at level nine, you see an attack speed increase. And then at levels 11 through 15, you see an attack speed increase. Granted, as long as you're running a level 30 muscle band, and you need all you need are three Red Emblems. So, you know, where do we start with this build? Well, there's a Moltres, which can give you a red and white um, combination. Moltres is a Pokemon that has uh, bad stats for us. I think it might have been minus attack or might have been plus special attack for something, uh, a defensive stat loss. I think that's what it was. Um, so we run a bronze Moltres in this build, which allows us to also uh, go into some of the white emblems and um, Kabutops, which is a really good emblem that got released recently, gives us some crit rate and the blue and brown, which synergizes well with Gyarados which is a free one that you get as well. Um, Flareon and Rapidash, while they're not perfect emblems for Duraludon, um, they get the job done. They, they're okay stats-wise. And there's some solid white emblems, and it's just a complete build. You know, it's got a bit of everything. Gives you some percent attack, some percent HP, which is always going to be handy. And then all you need is the three red emblems. The flat stats are nice. The plus 12 attack is honestly one of the nicest parts about this build. It helps a lot with your basic attacks, especially in the early game. 
Um, but I think this is a solid build. Remember, you have to have a muscle band. And it's got to be level 30 for you to be able to take advantage of this. Um, there just isn't enough information, nor should there be information on anything less than a 30 muscle band. Um, but yeah, this I would say I couldn't find another Pokemon this this particular build would work on. I think Glaceon is another Pokemon that can use three red emblems. I don't have a great Glaceon build set up, but when I show you guys how to make your own builds, you know, if you really want to try an attack speed Glaceon kind of build, um, I can show you how to figure that out on your own. But cool. Let's, uh, let's talk about another set of red emblems that are interesting. I don't think um, these Pokemon are going to use it ideally, like very optimally, I should say. But there is an opportunity for them to use it. Um, and these four Pokemon are Pokemon that see an attack speed tier increase with red emblems. Granted, they've got, granted they've got a level 30 muscle band. In the case of Eldegoss, I think there's an argument to be made. You know, you could take advantage of it. If you're set on playing Auroraville A9, I think you could take advantage of that as well. Um, so these two Pokemon, definitely there's some viability here. Um, I've heard about people using it with Trick. Because Trick basically gives you a second basic attack on your target that's Trick. So that combined with Hoopa and Unbound form might be worthwhile to explore. Um, Wiggly's another Pokemon that technically does get the a tier upgrade. Uh, I think it's post level four. Wiggly and Eldegoss see that upgrade. And Wiggly's got a really good boosted attack. So speeding it up should be pretty good. And the benefit is the Red Emblems actually favor special attack or Pokemon. If you notice, I've got plus 15 flat special attack. and Another cool observation of this build is it actually runs all three legendary birds, which is what I'm most excited about, you know? You can throw on Moltres, which gives you special attack. Uh, Zapdos and Articuno are minus attack for Articuno being special attack plus, and Zapdos being HP. So these three alone, you know, they give you the red color combination that we need, the blue, which we can't really synergize with, and the yellow we can't synergize with, but they all happen to be white. Porygon is another special attack emblem increase. Um, and then we just have to fit in the best red ones that we can. There's some special attack from the Charizard line. Um, and it's pretty good. It ends up looking pretty nice. It's decently efficient in terms of your minus stats. You do lose some defenses, but you get the HP back. And yeah, I, I would say this could be fun. And if you've got the space for it, there's definitely four Pokemon that can all use it uh, really well. Cool. For those of you guys that were around in the streams yesterday, you might have heard about the 666 meme. Um, before I explain what you're looking at on screen, I'll explain the meme, what was happening. Is us five stacking with Otter, Lutano, Zug, um, and Retsu. And someone was saying, oh man, Fui, who was on the other team, because we played them like four or five times in a row at that point. They're like, oh, Fui is really tanky. And I was like, oh, maybe Fui is playing the 666 build, you know, with double defense. Because they felt like his defenses were high. And I was like, yeah, Fui seems like the kind of guy to play 666. And it unfortunately triggered someone in thinking that I was just casually saying 666 when I was referring to this emblem build right here. But this is a build I see a lot on uh, Twitter or a lot of people asking about it in Math Chord or even in my stream. Like, oh, did you know you could run six, um, you know, six brown, six blue, and six purple? And yes, you can. Um, I think you would probably, some of these emblems, you'd probably want to have bronze. So ones that are, um, not great on your stats. But if I compare this to the build that we had earlier, the six, um, this physical tank build, um, I feel like, honestly, I feel like we're going to get more out of this max HP and the flat HP combined with the fact that we get to be a lot more efficient and we still get to maintain some of those defenses. Um, like, flat defense on the minus here are both the same. Um, they get a little bit flat special defense, but we get a chunk of more HP and we get some more health. Um, and on top, we there's a big movement speed gap here. Uh, that being said, I think this build is absolutely fine. You can run this on all the all-rounders and it's going to be fine um but even if you crunch the numbers and figure out a pokemon or a level range where this build was more ehp against this build what you have to consider is that charizard and tyranitar exist okay so even if there's a level where this build on the left is slightly tankier 
you're setting yourself up for failure in blind pick when the other team can have two sources of true damage. Where this build will heavily underperform into Zard and Titar. And this build is almost always going to outperform the one on the left. Um, so I would avoid this build. But it's a fun build to look at, for sure. Um, and it's not an awful build, right? You could be playing a lot worse. But, you know, kind of just remember that. Remember when you're, like, stacking defenses up? That Charizard is in the meta right now. And I don't see it going away from the meta. And Titar gets played enough that it's just going to suck for both of them to just ignore your defenses. Um, so yeah, I would prefer this one on the right or the physical attacker build that's six brown and four white. I think that one's going to work well as well. But again, these are all builds that are cool and they're playable. Uh, finally, this is more of just like a flare I saw on the math board. Uh, Steve, my cat, and their Twitch link is right here on the screen as well. They posted this rainbow build, and I, I wanted to just draw attention to it because it looks so cool, where it's perfect in that it, all the plus minus adds up to zero on everything, and you also have exactly one of each color. So yeah, I don't know. It just looks cool. That's, that's pretty much why it's here. Their Twitch link is here. I think their Twitter is on their same handle, so definitely credits to them for this build. It's just really, really cool. So, uh, we talked about a, a handful of builds, right? And I think it would be helpful for you guys to just copy them emblem for emblem. But I understand not a lot of you have enough time to play or saved up enough emblems in the past, enough roles to have all the emblems in the game. And like me, who plays the game daily, you might be missing some emblems. Um, so I want to show you the thought process on how do I come to these builds and how you can understand like what are good alternatives you can make what are good sacrifices or concessions you can make so that you can still have a good time with emblems? Because emblems can be very, very stressful. Um, so the template that I've been using it exists off of Unite DB. Um, so if you want to do it, I would recommend you doing. If you want to follow along and do it, that's cool as well. Um, but if you want to take notes or revisit this in the future when you are making your own builds, um, just keep this is the site that you want to be using. So immediately I'm going to switch over to gold here just because I want to see what the builds like optimal can be. And then if I want to have bronze emblems that are um, bad stats for me, I can switch over to bronze to have that kind of difference there. Um, but I'm generally the way I start is I start with an idea. So say I want to run, let's say with a pink build, okay? You know, maybe we're like, all right, we want to mess around with tenacity. Um, what's the best tenacity build we can make, okay? Uh, and I'll do a standard build to kind of help illustrate that as well, but let's do a fun one first. Um, okay, so pink goes up to five. Say we want to go all five pink. Uh, boom, we're at five pink. Um, we're already losing some speed, which is just how pink emblems work, but we're getting some good HP. Uh, and we've got five spots left, one of them being a purple spot. Um, Generally, you know, for any fillers, I like to go with white. HP is universally good. And it's a tenacity build. Maybe it's a tank build. Um, so yeah, we'll switch to white. And say I want to make this build for Greedent, Snorlax, a physical attacker type of tank. So I'm going to switch this over to negative. Um, and I want to take a look at all the white emblems that reduce my special attack. Okay, so now I see I want to pick four of these basically because I can't go to six white. I can get to four. Um, and I want to do minus special attack because I'm thinking of Pokemon that are physical tanks and special attack is going to be useless for them. So let's go. Pidgeot instantly HP for special attack. Kangaskhan is just another version of Pidgeot. So if you ever only have room for one or the other, they're always replaceable with each other. Um, and then if I'm planning ahead, is there a way that I can incorporate like blue and purple all together? Maybe. And Gyarados is plus attack for minus special attack, so we can do that. If you don't have Gyarados, you'll notice Firo is the exact same stats. So that's always a replacement you can make. Um, and then Tauros, also the same. They're all plus attack, minus special attack. Um, and then I can run one more and why not? We'll do the Firo. We'll add some extra attack in. I've got one spot left and blue purple. I just know that there's enough, that there's a couple of blue purple ones out there. 
So let's take a look at what my options are. Um, I can run slow bro, which gives me some more defense, but it lowers my speed even more. So that doesn't seem very exciting. Um, star me, I can take away some of the attack and I can gain some of my speed back. That might be an okay option. Um, Jinx, minus defense for plus special attack. If I wanted to run Jinx, I would run a bronze Jinx here. Um, but I like Sarmi. I like the speed. I want to get some of my speed back so the pink emblems don't feel as bad. Um, it enables both of my defenses. And cool. You know, this is maybe a potential uh, tenacity build that I would play. Um, you know, ten typically with tenacity, you're losing speed because of these emblems right here, um, which is unfortunate. And we get some of it back to Starmie. Uh, we're not losing too much attack. And for the most part, it doesn't look too bad. Um, is Tenacity worth it to play? I don't know. Probably not. But on tank Pokemon, Tenacity scales very well. Um, as well as on Sylveon and Serena, because they have built-in Tenacity. Cool. Um, so that might be how if I had a pink build that I wanted to run. But say I wanted to play one of these builds. I wanted to play like, we want to play this physical attacker build, but maybe you're missing some emblem. So let's try to just build it out and see how I built that, how I came to that build. So the idea is that we want six brown, four white, right? So we'll start with brown again, and immediately we're gonna go to negative special attack. So these are the ones that I wanna start focusing on. Um, now the ones that I typically have, and I'm just gonna give you guys a bit of a hint, is if you can run the Nido pair, it's just generally, at least, especially in this meta, it's always gonna be good. Nido gives you eight, Nido Queen gives you HP at the cost of special attack. This is an instant lock for anything, pretty much. Um, and it's a double color. Nido King com combines the color combination. You get attack at the cost of defense, but combining the colors gives you purple, um, which gives you special defense. So you're basically trading a bit of defense for a bit of special defense, which into the special attack meta heavy, have a uh, heavy meta. It's honestly fine. So I would start there. Then I'd go to minus special attack. And okay, we need four more. Um, and you know, we could Aerodactyl for the brown white, but say, you know, we're a returning player and we don't have that, right? Um, we have a lot of options. But Champ is a great option. Um, it's just plus attack minus special attack. Uh, Primate, always a great option, plus HP minus special attack. Polyrath, while you know, it is minus special attack and you only get special defense, it is a brown emblem. And everyone should have a Gyarados. Gyarados is white and blue. So this will always be valuable to you. So you could run either one of these. They're both minus special attack, blue, brown. Um, so we'll pick one of those. Um, Marowak and Machamp are the same, so you, they could be played interchangeably. Um, maybe you only have Sand Slash. Now you've got a little crit heavy build. Um, that's okay, but if you don't have a golden Sand Slash, um, you know, you can play the Primate. Primate's very, very good. And say, like, you don't have the Marowak, you don't have the Machamp, you know, maybe you're just missing stuff. Honestly, it's not even the end of the world to just play the Hitmonlee pair. If, if, if this is what you have, it's not that bad, right? Or alternatively, right, you know, you could play this for a slightly more efficient build, or what some builds will do, and there's nothing wrong with it, is you can flip the script. We don't have to go minus special attack. We'll go positive attack. Because attack is an important enough stat that we want to invest in no matter what. Um, and, you know, I'd say these two are fine emblems to run in place of any of these brown ones that you might be missing. Machop and Machoke. Um, you lose defense or maybe a bit of speed. And I, I think I would prefer losing the special defense over the speed. But people run either one of these. It's fine. Um, you can make that concession there. I would stick away from Cubone. Uh, you know, I never want to lower my HP if I can help it, but you can add any of these in here. But pretty much you want, your decisions are going to be like either plus attack on brown or minus special attack, right? So pick one of those, whatever is the best you've got, even Golem. I like, you know, early on into the meta when I didn't have a lot of emblems, I ran some Golem. Nothing wrong with, nothing wrong with go Golem here. Um, and then we switch over to the white emblems. Um, if you're playing in this season, you should grind to get the free golden Gyarados. But if you don't have it, it's not the end of the world. Um, you don't have to pair this Kabutops with anything. You can just be an empty blue emblem. But for the sake of this video, everyone should be able to get the golden Gyarados. Um, and you want to do the same thing. 
Let's go minus special attack and let's look at our options. Um, there's a lot of ones, you know, there's Pidgeot, Kangaskhan, which are both premier HP options. There's Fero, Tauros, and Gyarados, which are the premier attack options. But, you know, say you don't have all of these, it's fine to run Raticate here. Raticate's, you know, HP for, uh, or defense for special attack. It's not the end of the world. As long as it's efficient, you're not gonna, it's not gonna be that painful. Like, there's better options, but it's fine. Or we can do the same thing that we did with Brown, is instead of going positive or negative special attack, we can go positive attack. Uh, we could also go positive HP. Uh, we could do that for Brown as well. So as long as we're not lowering our attack stat, it's not, it's not that bad. You can run something like a Pidgey or Pidgeotto or a Chansey if that's all you've got. Uh, Dragon Knight's in the same boat. You know, this 50 HP is going to go further than the minus defense in, it, in the slot that it's in. So these are fine to also go for if you if this is all you can afford, you know? At the end of the day, we still accomplish six white or six brown, four white, and two of each defense. Um compared to this build, you know, we're missing out on um six attack, which kind of sucks, and we're losing a lot more defenses. But we've got 50 extra HP. Um, you know, we put the cobble tops in there because maybe that's all we had. And we got some crit rate out of it as well. And this is fine, right? The difference between these two builds isn't going to be a difference in your ability to perform in a game. Um, and as you unlock more emblems, you know, you can go and make this more and more efficient. You know, we can take the Pidgey out and boom, we added in a Tauros, right? Maybe our Dragonite, can, we can replace that with like a Fero. Um, you know, maybe we still are waiting on something to replace Eradicate. But we go and we add in, you know, maybe some better brown emblems as we get them, right? And maybe our Machamp, Machoke becomes a Machamp. And like suddenly this build starts to get better and better, you know, 12 attack, you know, we still have some HP. Um, you know, we can make it even better with more stuff we get. But the idea is that be flexible with what you have. Um, this isn't, these aren't the builds that are going to be the best in slot builds. I think these, the ones in my slides, and I'll share these after, are going to be your best and salt ones, but feel free to be liberal with what you have. And yeah, if you're ever curious, you know, if, you, if beyond this you still need help, you can pop into my chat, ask me, you know, a very specific question you have. I have no problem asking questions. Um, the math cord, public resource, you can go in there and ask questions as well, if you're still confused. But I would say, you know, out of respect to myself and the contributors in the math cord, and just anyone that you do ask questions for, try to, you know, exhaust all the resources or some resources you can find online. Try making it on your own first, right? And if you're like, oh man, should I run like, you know, I, I have the option between like a golem and a polyrath or like this and a that, you ask it, you know, maybe, maybe if I've got the time or someone's got the time, they can hand look at that for you. But just remember, if you're following the basics and the foundations on what I said, you'll never make a decision very bad that it'll be embarrassingly bad. And if you've just got these builds loaded up, if you've got all the emblems and you have these four builds, um, there's no Pokemon you could play that you'll be like, oh, I got emblem diffed. Other than that, yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Again, if you made it all the way to the end, make sure you support the resources that make this possible. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe. If you're watching it on Twitch, you guys also need to go subscribe. Uh, I'm trying to get to 30k subs by the end of the year, and we're at like 16 right now. So I don't know. I don't know if it's doable, but I hope you guys can help.